It's more than sad. In the constitutional history of India, this will be a black day. I have no illusions that I'm going to persuade anyone from the Treasury benches to listen to us or to appreciate our argument or to change their mind or to defer this bill. It will be an absolute exercise in futility. If I stand up to speak and perform this exercise in futility, it is because I speak through you and this House to a future generation of Indians. Momentarily, you think you have scored a victory. The drum beats that you will hear on the streets will certainly encourage you to believe that you have scored a signal victory, or as one of the honorable members said, you have corrected, quote unquote, a so called injustice of history. You are wrong, and history will prove you to be wrong, and future generations will realize what a grave mistake this House is making today. So let me deal with a few things and close my speech. I certainly don't have the heart to speak today. <coughs> a few days ago I wrote that this is the house of the, that is, Lok Sabha is the house of the people, the Council of States, the Rajya Sabha is the Council of States. <coughs> Our foremost duty is to protect the rights of states. And by protecting the rights of states, protect the rights of the people of those states. Day after day, we fail to protect the rights of states. We have passed numerous bills which are on the concurrent list. There has been no consultation with any state. Yet we pass those bills completely oblivious of the rights of states. I wrote that we are reducing states to municipal administrations. Today, you have gone a further step. You are not even reducing states to municipal administrations. You are making a states and you will make states your vassal. You will reduce states to colonies and you think you are doing something which is constitutional. So be that as it may, what have you done today? You are passing an order under Article 370 by which you are repealing the earlier application order and making a new application order. <coughs> Ostensibly the purpose is to amend Article 70, Sub-Article D and substitute the words <coughs> Legislative Assembly for the words Constituent Assembly. Well, I think, I'm sure some wise men in the law ministry may have told you that that's possible. I have no quarrel with anyone's wisdom. I could be wrong and they could be right. But I think you have forgotten that you cannot modify Article 370 by an order under Article 370. 
Article 370 enables you to modify such other provisions of the Constitution. It's beyond my comprehension how Article 370 order can be used to modify Article 370. I leave it there. I'm certainly not competent to hold a class in law. I may be wrong. But it's beyond my comprehension how Article 370 can be used to modify Article 370 when the language of the article is you can modify other provisions of the Constitution. You're doing another thing. You're passing two resolutions today. We're hoping you will pass. I'm sure you will pass it. And the first resolution Article 370 itself will cease to exist. I know this is your manifesto promise. You said we will repeal Article 370. By this resolution, you think you are repealing Article 370. But in repealing Article 370, you are unleashing forces which you cannot control. I have dealt with state, the state of Jammu and Kashmir. The Honorable Home Minister today deals with that state. More than anyone else, he will appreciate what I am saying. Yes, there are in the state of Jammu and Kashmir, a number of young men who have taken to violence, who preach secession, and who want to split JNK from the Union of India. No one condones their action. No one supports their action. The Congress party and every other party has, is implacably opposed to those young men. But there were thousands of other young men for reasons which they think are good, pelted stones. Thousands of other young men for reasons which they think are good, called hartals. I have interacted with them. I read a delegation of parliament along with Sri Arun Jaitley. When I first visited Jammu and Kashmir as Home Minister, they called a hartal. The whole state was shut down. But when I led a parliamentary delegation along with Sri Arun Jaitley and many other distinguished members of parliament, the whole state turned out to receive us. Thousands and thousands of people came to see us. Thousands came and represented to us. And I had stated what I had gathered from that experience. It was an eye-opener for all, all of us. Not all in Jammu and Kashmir. In fact, the overwhelming majority in Jammu and Kashmir doesn't want secession, doesn't want to leave the Union of India. I believe, you may disagree with me, I believe they want more autonomy. Now, whether you want to give them autonomy or not is the government's prerogative. But I believe they want autonomy. Now, what are you doing by repealing Article 370? I fear, I genuinely fear, Honorable Home Minister, I genuinely fear you are pushing the thousands and thousands of young men from this column to join the other column of a few hundred. I sincerely hope it will not happen, but if it happens, you will rue this day, you will rue this day when you repeal the Article 370. Sir, the second thing you're doing is you're dismembering a state. You think they're doing it to Jammu and Kashmir. 
But what you are doing to Jammu and Kashmir using these provisions, misinterpreting these provisions, in fact, I could go to say mischievously interpreting these provisions, what you are doing to Jammu and Kashmir can be done to any other state. Yes, correct. Please tell me why the mechanism that you have devised to dismember Jammu and Kashmir will not apply to any other state. Please convince us that Derek O'Brien and I are wrong. All you have to do is dismiss an elected government, dissolve the state legislature, promulgate president's rule, declare parliament to be the state legislature for the time being, and divide that state. My friend from Orissa, I told him, what stops a future government from carving out a union territory for the KBK districts? What stops a future government from creating a union territory or a new state in North Bengal? What stops a future government from dividing Tamil Nadu? My friends from the IADMK are here. They don't realize what you're doing. The same provisions, the same method, the same resolutions can be applied to any state. But I think in doing it for Kashmir, you've made a fatal legal error. I won't tell you what the legal error is now. You will discover it in due course. But my greater concern is what you are doing today sends a very, very wrong signal to all the states of this country. Sir, all I can do is appeal, appeal to the Honorable Home Minister, even at this late stage, stop, pause, reflect on what we are doing. If you are determined to repeal Article 370, I can do nothing about it. It's between you and those who want Article 370 and the Supreme Court of India. But the other thing that you're doing, dismembering Jammu and Kashmir, dismembering Jammu and Kashmir, for heaven's sake, in the name of the people of India, I appeal to you, don't do that. Don't dismember that state. It's one state. It came to us as one state. I don't want to recall history or those tall personalities who brought Jammu and Kashmir to accede to India. Some names continue to reverberate. Sardar Vallabhai Patel, V.P. Menon, Gopal Sami Iyengar. They brought Jammu and Kashmir under the instrument of accession. That is history. That is a historical document. It's as important as the Constitution of India. <coughs> but if you wish to ignore history, if you wish to ignore the compact made with Maharaja Hari Singh, if you wish to ignore what Sardar Vallabhai Patel was able to achieve in those difficult days, it's your privilege. Do what you like. What you're doing is wrong. What you're doing is wrong. Repealing Article 35A is wrong. Amending the Constitution, invoking Article 370 is wrong. Doing away with Article 370 is wrong. But do all those wrongs. Do all those wrongs. I'm willing to... Who am I? I'm willing to tolerate all those wrongs. But for heaven's sake, don't dismember Jammu and Kashmir. Don't do that cardinal sin. Don't commit that monumental blunder. Sir... Shortly after I was born, this country became free. This country is free, democratic, republican, liberal, secular. 
all of us who are below the age of 70, all of you who are below the age of 70, were born in such a country. Today I despair. How long will this country remain the country envisaged by the founding fathers of our Constitution? How long will it remain truly free, truly democratic, truly republican, truly liberal, truly secular, and truly a union of states? India, that is Bharat, is a union of states. What you are doing is destroying that union of states, and what you do today will have catastrophic consequences in the future. If you know what you're doing, do it. If you know what you're doing, do it. But please remember, you will bear responsibility for the catastrophic consequences of this action. I stoutly oppose what the government is doing, and we will sit here, listen to you, and vote against what you're doing. Thank, Thank you, Mr. P.